His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Edict 114 of the year 2023 amending Article 1 of Edict 9 of the year 2023 on restructuring the National Committee for Childhood based on a proposal by the Minister of Social Development and following the approval of the Cabinet. The Edict stipulates the following. Article 1. The third clause of Article 1 of Edict 9 of the year 2023 to reconstitute the National Committee for Childhood shall be replaced with the following. The Director of Licensing and Early Education follow-up representing the Ministry of Education. Under the patronage of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Huawei ICT Competition 2023-2024 Middle East and Central Asia concluded with the partnership of Bahrain Polytechnic and the University of Bahrain. During his address as the competition, His Highness Sheikh Nasser affirmed the importance of developing the skills of the youth, highlighting the importance of providing lifelong education and training. He added that the participation of over 27,500 participants from 600 universities in the region is a remarkable remarkable beginning for a long cooperation between the public and private sectors in preparing for the youth's future. Your Excellencies, esteemed guests and participants, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I like the word uh, gamified boot camps. Three years ago, we mandated the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, the Ministry for Youth Affairs, the Ministry of Labor, the Ministry of Education to look into ways of rapidly upskilling and reskilling our youths. I explained to our team of ministers that in the military, we are very focused on lifelong education and training, a journey that never stops. We are continuously upgrading uh, ourselves and our teams, and we are constantly evolving. Um, what I wanted three years ago was to create opportunities to upgrade and upskill participants through high-intensity, gamified interactions. In essence, what I was looking for was high-intensity, high-impact, competitive gamified boot camps that teach new skills and objectively test capabilities um, to prepare for one for future challenges and opportunities. So this initiative, thanks to Huawei, uh, makes me pleased when uh, Huawei was one of the first companies to respond to this vision and to introduce us the Middle East and Central Asia competition which was aligned with our direction. I'm tremendously pleased to hear that this chapter has reached over 27,500 participants from 600 universities uh, from the region. It's amazing. This is a fantastic start to an excellent long-term collaboration between the private sector and the public sector in preparing our youths for their future. We have no doubt that the future versions will only grow in size. Well, to my fellow competitors, uh, I mean, I'll leave you with this, okay? There is nothing purer than the love and readiness to compete. For you, if you win, then you win. And if you don't, you still win the knowledge, the experience, and the friendship, the camaraderie that you have built amongst yourselves. In all cases, you are today, after this challenge, better prepared for tomorrow and one step of competing peers. So for that, I would say congratulations. I am a believer that the era ahead of us is People would say full of problems. I would say it's full of opportunities. This is what I see anyways. I hope that you see the endless possibilities and opportunities that are coming our way. Only a few years ago, the general public felt that there is very little left to develop in technology, and we thought we knew where everything is going. Now, think of the last few months. Think of the advent of publicly available machine learning Think of the introduction of mass market AI tools and what they've been able to accomplish. Now think of the skills which you have developed and the skills you're working on developing and think of what you'll be able to do in the future. We live in exciting times. And may you always be ready to cooperate, to collaborate, to compete and to win, inshallah. Thank you very much.
For his part, the Minister of Education and Chairman of the University of Bahrain UOB Board of Trustees, Dr. Mohammed Jam'a hailed the continuous support of His Highness Sheikh Nasser to the youth and his role in encouraging them to continue learning, creating and innovating. He affirmed the importance of the partnership between UOB and Huawei and its role in training Bahraini youth on honing their skills as well as its contribution to opening a specialized laboratory and advanced digital library in UOB. The Vice President of Huawei Middle East and Central Asia, Shun Li Guang, has affirmed that talents in information and telecommunications technology are the basis for the digital economy in the Middle East and Central Asia. 66 students and 20 teachers won the competition. The global finals will be held in China in May 2024. Today we witnessed the final ceremony and the closing ceremony of the Huawei ICT competition for the Middle East and Central Asia under the patronage of His Highness uh, Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the representative of His Majesty the King uh, for uh, humanitarian works and youth affairs. Uh, the competition is growing year after year with uh, the number of uh, participating countries and the number of participating universities and number of participating students. Uh, the participation of University of Bahrain along with the Polytechnic is also uh, improving year after year. We are achieving uh, high levels. Uh, we are also uh, introducing new ideas. Uh, the uh, culture of participating in such competition is spreading in a beautiful way between our students. They wait for this competition year after year and it's becoming exciting because we are not just limited to, to the regional competition. We are e reaching the final one in China. Inshallah next year we will reach again. Uh, and uh, we are happy to host this uh, uh, event and uh, we are also excited to see the impact of this on our faculty and students. Today it was an, a great, great honor for us where we attended a great competition that happened for the young generation, mainly on the ICT domain. Today the ICT domain discovers so many areas, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things and so many other areas. The ownership that we saw today from His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad is amazing. It's actually one of the most prestigious things that we saw in the country. And this actually shows how much the leadership of the country actually they are focusing on putting the right effort to make sure that we have the right people, the right caliber in Bahrain represented by the Bahrainis themselves and so many other countries. This is a foundational event for uh, students in ICT, not only in Bahrain but in the region. It, is, uh, it has tremendous value in terms of empowering these students to uh, bring out the best in them, to bring out new innovations that we will utilize as employers and as nations uh, to advance us in terms of ICT and the usage of technology. So I was quite pleased to see the development and the uh, number of nations that are participating here in Bahrain today. Throughout this journey, challenges have been a uh, part of the process, but they have only fueled my determination to excel. Um, I see this competition as more than just a quest for a victory. For me, it's a platform to grow, uh, to, uh, to challenge limits, ignite creativity, and grow personally and professionally. 
The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Fazayani, participated in the sixth session of the Arab Russian Cooperation Forum held in Marrakesh, Morocco, chaired by the Moroccan Minister of Foreign Affairs, African Cooperation, and Moroccan expatriates Nasser Bourita. Speaking at the forum, Dr. Zayani said that Bahrain perceived the historical ties between Russia and Arab countries as a distinguished relations based on mutual respect, understanding, and interest, adding that they hold great importance for global stability, security, and prosperity. Dr. Zayani stated that the sixth session of the Arab Russian Cooperation Forum presents an excellent opportunity to enhance cooperation. He addressed appreciation for Russia's significant geopolitical role in the Middle East and its efforts to address Arab countries' crises. Expressing hope for increased cooperation and coordination, Dr. Zayani said that Russia, as a permanent member of the Security Council, is expected to contribute to regional peace and alleviate current tensions, including the Palestinian Israeli conflict. He expressed his appreciation for Russia's initiative to submit a resolution for the Gaza Strip War and supposed support you. And resolutions. The Minister of Foreign Affairs reiterated Bahrain's call for a peaceful resolution to the Ukraine war through dialogue to ensure the interests of the two parties as well as global security and stability. He emphasized the need to renew the Black Sea Grain Initiative to ensure food security for affected countries. The minister hoped that this session of the forum will issue recommendations and decisions that will strengthen Arab Russian cooperation to address security and economic challenges. In the presence of the Minister of Tele Transportation and Telecommunications, Mohammed Al Kabi, and the President of the World Meteorological Organization, WMO, Dr. Abdullah Al Manous, the Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunications, represented by the Civil Aviation Affairs hosts, is in cooperation with the WMO. The meeting of the 50th session of the Typhoon Committee of the WMO and the Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific. On the occasion, the Minister affirmed the importance of continuing efforts to combat the phenomena of weather change and fluctuations and alleviating their impact by developing proactive plans to address them optimally when they occur. al Kabi addressed that a crew of qualified specialists at the Meteorological Directorate is working on issuing early warnings on severe weather fluctuations by using smart technology in monitoring and forecasting. The Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications, Mohamed Al Kabi, met with the President of the World Meteorological Organization, Abdel Al Mandous, on the sidelines of the 50th session of the WMO ESCA panel on uh, tropical cyclones. They reviewed means of cooperation in the meteorological field and discussed cooperation in the field of training and education, exchange of information and technology, and development of early warning systems. During the opening of the second digital government forum held in Riyadh under the theme Our Future is Now, the Bahrain Open Data Portal won Best Open Data Initiative at the 5th GCC Digital Government Award. The General Secretariat of the Council of Representatives and the Bahrain Institute for Political Development organized a lecture entitled The National Human Rights Plan 2022-2026. Within the activities of the Illuminations Program, the lecture reviewed the projects related to the various aspects of the National Human Rights Plan in addition to the annual reports and the Kingdom's achievements in this field. 
The recovery program of the General Directorate of Criminal Investigations and Forensic Science to assist drug addicts has won a bronze medal in the health category for the MENA region as part of the CV International Award. Director General of Criminal Investigations and Forensic Science Brigadier Abdelaziz Ramehi congratulated the Interior Minister for the milestone highlighting the Minister's directives to promote innovation and achieve development. The program is part of the outcomes of the National Plan to Combat Drugs and Psychotropic Substances and realize on or relays on modern approaches and innovative scientific plans to help addicts. As part of its strategy to develop the tourism product and market the Kingdom of Bahrain, the Bahrain Tourism Exhibitions Authority continues to receive cruise ships at Khalifa bin Salman port as part of the 2023-2024 cruise ship season. Windstar Cruise, Lee Bougainville, Norwegian Dawn, MSC Cruise and Adia Cruise along with several luxury cruise ships have arrived. The authority also prepared several programs for tourists directly after their arrival from the cruise ships to visit a number of tourist and archaeological sites in the kingdom, in addition to popular markets and commercial complexes. The new cruise ship season aims to increase the continued growth of the marine tourism sector and inform global marine tourism companies of the commercial advantages they can benefit from them through close cooperation with the authorities' partners in the kingdom's ports.